welcome to the channel thank you everyone for tuning in today i'm bringing you the xdao a watch which i only just unboxed in a series of unboxings now the fact that i'm bringing this video out so soon to you guys means only one thing this is something special and the fact that it got me to go outside and record a bunch of b-rolls and attempt some cinematography also shows that i think this watch is something special now i heavily underestimated this watch in the initial pictures when i saw it come up for sale on aliexpress and truth be told i kind of fobbed it off a little now when i got to the unboxing almost instantly i was taken back at the sheer quality of finishing on display i've held hundreds of watches in hand and from many brands as you guys know and seasoned watch reviewers the hands eyes are extremely sensitive to something which does stand out this watch is near flawless in its level of finishing this is what separates everything now Chinese watches have gone so good at giving us literally every specification possible at an extremely low price that we end up kind of underappreciating it quite a lot. So sapphire, ceramic, PVD coating, whatever else, all of this is no big deal and I now consider it a standard specification. But it's the level of finishing, micro detailing and attention to detail which separates watches as I have said before. Now this may sound like a sales pitch but it isn't. Right, those of you guys that know me know that I only speak very enthusiastically about watches which I actually believe will live up to that. Right, There's countless examples throughout my numerous videos on YouTube. So you know where to even start on this watch? Every angle, every inch, every millimeter, every feature of this watch is near flawless. So let's start at the dial. It has a very intricate pattern, a great depth of color, now this watch comes in a total of five different colors including this one and the dial it seems to be pressed due to the pattern and it is perfect the intricate checkerboard style dial switches between individual squares composed of horizontal lines and like a grid like pattern uh, which means you get a slightly different emphasis on the individual squares depending on the angle of light sometimes the horizontal lines are more visible or the smaller chocolate bar style squares uh, the light plane means that the dial is consistently switching between the two types of smaller squares present. You can also see the raised logo at 12 and the model number above the 6 perfectly printed in silver and a colour match date wheel at the 3 o'clock housed in a polished frame. The dial is also layered with a chapter ring placed on top with defined concentric lines finished with silver minute markers. They're quite subtle and they don't intrude on the dial. Now the 3D applied hour markers are slim, fully polished and they have the tiniest detail that the naked eye could miss. I managed to catch it. They're actually beveled on either end of the tip. Very difficult to see but it is there. Now I think this detail could have been enhanced had the tops of the hour markers been brushed. The hands also follow suit being fully polished with a chamfer matching those hour markers and a fully polished seconds hand. It's perfect length as both minute and seconds hand clearly touch the minute markers. The loom is also quite bright considering there isn't that much area for it to be applied. The thin slithers of BGW9 do a good job of showing up when it's dark and hanging on for quite a while. Now the flat AR coated sapphire sits perfectly flush with the impressive bezel used. This bezel has four layers of finishing. We start off on the inner circumference, you'll see a thin and highly polished inner ring followed by a satin circular brushing which contains the polished pips on the bezel which then transitions into another beveled polished surface, which again transitions into a circular satin brushing towards the bottom of the bezel. This is ridiculous levels of micro detailing. Can you even imagine the work going into just one piece? Note how crisp the transitions are. There's zero error in between the polishing and the brushing, zero blurring, but just crisp precision. Now let me take you to the crown guards, right? To show you exactly why I am so impressed by this watch, You've got linear brushing across the A-face, the flat surface, but as soon as you turn it, you even have very thin bevels which are perfectly polished with that same crisp line before the satin brushing on the side profile. Now I know this is also present on the original, but this execution is equally as impressive. Being able to do this without blurring the lines, this just goes to show the level of workmanship which has gone into this watch. The case also follows the same type of brushing mixed with shiny polished bevels around the frame, highlighting the case shape. There's a smooth and satin brushing across the sides which gives the case a very silky smooth finish especially along the upper portion now turning the watch over we get a less impressive and somewhat basic case back which is slightly blown out no doubt to house the movement but at 10.5 millimeters thick it doesn't really matter 
Finish in the same satin brushing with a polished ring containing the specifications. Now we can move on to the integrated bracelet. I love the design of the center links here and how like the first link integrated into the case allows the following H-link to fully articulate under the case. This is something we don't see on cases like the PRX as the links don't allow this to happen. The first link has had enough material removed to allow it to fold under the case, which will make this watch fit so much better on wrist. Considering it's a very flat case, I'm glad the bracelet was designed this way. The links are all satin brushed with even consistency. The light just washes over the links and you have large polished bevels on either side of the H-links, enhancing them both visually and to the touch. The center rectangular links are beveled on all four edges, giving the bracelet a very smooth feel. And I'd like to point out that all the links are actually curved. This is going to enhance the fit and feel on wrist to allow great articulation. Now I'm starting to run out of vocabulary here describing this watch and I might need to hit some synonyms to continue but none of this is exaggerated. This is finished to a very high degree such that I haven't seen before. Now moving over to the clasp, yes it is a butterfly clasp but it is thicker than normal, solid in build and a very positive and satisfying click. It also suits the profile of the watch perfectly. It gives it a seamless finish when closed, large pushes and the whole clasp is brushed on both ends. The x now logo engraved on either end of the clasp and now there is minimal movement on both ends when closed. So all signs of a well-engineered mechanism. Now given all the smaller details that I mentioned which will aid the articulation on wrist, the watch fits amazingly well. It fits exactly like a cuff, full wrap around the wrist, even though you have a slightly extended log to log due to that integrated center link, it doesn't add anything to the overall log to log in terms of wearability. The first link, second link sits perfectly on wrist. Uh, the watch has a really good wrap around uh, and the 40 millimeter diameter presents itself really well on wrist. It makes it quite visual, quite prominent as well. Um, and the overall build quality, the brushing, the polishing just, just makes this watch shine from every angle and the smooth brushing helps the light kind of flow down it without it glaring into your eyes too much. It is one of the most comfortable integrated watches that I've ever worn and I really do like the presence on the wrist. Even the 150 gram weight is really well spread out over the wrist. There's no top heaviness and the weight is really well spread out. I don't think I could ask for more in terms of comfort on the wrist and the overall fit that you guys can see on camera. Now onto the observations. I have very carefully have been stating that this watch is almost flawless. There's two weak points to this watch. The first one, while the upper side of the watch, the visual surface is silky smooth overly refined there's two areas we are noticed which lack the same level of smoothness or refinement first one being just the underside of the case it's not sharp but it does have a clearly well-defined edge which is different to the rest of the case perhaps missed due to the immense focus everywhere else now i tested this watch and i didn't feel it on wrist it didn't scrape over my hand whilst removing it so it isn't that serious the second part where I felt some sharpness or edginess is the inside edge to the ends of the clasp. Again, not something you will feel, but it is there just to let you know I haven't been blinded by all the gorgeous polished details on the rest of the watch. Now, the weakest part of the watch is most definitely the crown. It's just too small. And it really annoys me when homage brands refuse to alter the design, irrespective of the brand they're homaging, just to increase its usability. The crown is a measly 5.4 millimeters and combined with the torquey wind of the Beat 5000, it is a bit of a struggle winding and operating it. I would have rather they shaved off a few millimeters of the crown guards and made it a minimum of a six to maybe six and a half millimeters. So what a watch. Genuinely so impressed by this piece by Ixdow, even with the minor observations uh, to the underside of the case and the small crown. So as a comparison, I'd say a sand margin of its quality would definitely be around the 300 mark, if not more. And this comes in at a very impressive 230 pound. You could even go for the Solita or the Eta 2824, although I don't know how to manage that considering you can't even buy the Etas anymore. But if you went for the Solita at 320 pounds, you'd have a slightly less torquey wind, which would make the crown easier to operate and Swiss build quality, meaning cleanliness, this PT5000, however, is running perfectly fine and well within specifications. Now, I do make subtle comparisons against San Martin, but I have to say, if it wasn't for San Martin being the absolute top end of quality for watches coming out of China, I don't think brands were pushing as hard to make better watches. I noticed back end of last year, we had a level up in quality from brands, and this year it's even more ridiculous, with much better watches and better value for money coming out. Now, I don't even know what will happen next year. 
So to finish off my thoughts on this watch, I'd rate it a very, very high 9.8 out of 10 in terms of design, execution, and finishing, and overall, maybe a 9.5 due to the smaller crown. Now, if this watch isn't exclusive to Xdao, you better be ready for every other brand who will release a model like this, and I may just do a comparison on the more popular brands if they choose to release this. So thank you all for watching. Comment as below as always, and I'll see you on the next video.